This is an update video on progress on my 73 Corvette. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of work on it today. We'll see how far I get. Uh, I wanna go over a few things I've done off camera already, and then uh, we'll take a close look of it here at the end of the day. Let's go. You're watching On The Mark, with Mark. Okay, let's, let's do the full run through here. You can see the master cylinder for the brakes is not in. Also, if the light was better, you could see that the steering column is also not in there. Now this rebuild that I'm doing this year does not include anything to do with the engine. We're leaving the engine alone. I've got enough on my plate the way it is. You can see how much dust I've got on it. And this door has been hung and I've added all the sound deadening stuff to the inside. There's the passenger door. The same um, techniques have been applied to that door with uh, adding rubber parts to the interior pieces to keep rattles down. Same thing on this side. Passenger door has also been hung and it can latch. I don't have any glass in the door right now and I'm leaving the door handle and the keyhole off for now because I want to get it painted and I don't want those parts to have to be taped off. So it's gonna get painted without those. It's getting to be kind of a layer of dust on the inside now. The thing has been sitting here for so long. I've had my battery maintainer on the car on and off over the last, boy, it's been several years. So I'm hoping that I've saved my Optima battery. So I'm going to unplug that just to get it out of my way. The thing I want to get done today is to get this dash back installed. Then it'll be ready for the steering column. I want to put the steering column in before I do the brake master cylinder because it, it makes it a little easier to see what I'm doing without the master cylinder. So before the steering column goes the dash. So let's see how that goes. The temperature out here in the garage on this summer day when I started here this morning, it was uh, 74 degrees when I first got out here. So I'm gonna stay out here as long as I can tolerate it. Now, I don't have insulation in my garage, but if you look over there on the wall, I actually do have an air conditioner that I built into the wall. I'm gonna turn that on just for grins and see if it can make any difference. Because like I said here, look up in the ceiling, there's no insulation in this garage, so any cool that goes in here probably just gets uh, sucked up by the heat. But we'll see if that can make any kind of difference. But like I said, it's 74 degrees in here right now. We'll see how this goes.
Okay, that takes care of the dash. It's in as far as it needs to get in. And I'm not 100% sure that I crammed that in exactly right. I did get the pneumatic lines hooked up to the headlight switch and the electrical um, connector connected to the headlight switch. Had I not gotten those two things, that would have been something I'd have to come back for. Now, there is some parts here. This uh, wiring harness here hooks into the steering column, and then there's also another bracket under here that goes under the steering column that has the, uh, the trip meter. There's a way of zeroing the trip meter in it. There's also a part of the pneumatics is under here. You can pull this little lever that uh, will cause the headlights to come up without turning them on so that you can clean them. So that needs to get put together after the steering column is in. So let's take a look at the steering column and see what's going on there. Here's the deal with the steering column. It's this lever right here. Now if I, if I turn the ignition on, that releases this lever. And what this lever is, is there's a cable that connects to this that goes down to the transmission. And my car's a four-speed car, so with the manual transmission, when you put the gear shift selector in reverse, that action of putting it in reverse pushes a cable which pulls this up. And when that gets pulled up, then you can turn the key off and pull the key out. Okay, if, if this lever was down, let's say you had it in first gear or neutral or something, you can't turn the key off. You can turn the engine off, but you won't be able to put the key in the lock position and you won't be able to get the key out. So what the deal is, it forces you to put the car in reverse, that lever comes up, you turn the car off, this locks, you can pull the key out. Now without the key, this won't turn of course, and neither will this. So now the car by that cable is locked in reverse. It's supposed to be an effort for anti-theft, anti and it might have worked some of the time. The problem I'm having is I'm putting in a, uh, a, a Borgson, I think it's called, steering box instead of the original factory steering box in there, which had a separate set of valves and uh, a slave cylinder that pushed and pulled the steering for the power steering. This new Borgson steering box has the hydraulic motor built into the box, which makes everything very clean. There's two less hoses and there's less opportunities for leaks. My valve body had been leaking for years and it just drives me crazy. I can't stand a leaking car. So I got rid of that for two reasons. Ride Tech recommended this steering box. Now I was gonna put in rack and pinion steering and they said, maybe think twice about that because they claim that with the rack and pinion steering, you lose some turning radius. Now, I don't know how much I really need. Maybe a little bit of turning radius being sacrificed would have been just fine. But anyway, this seemed like the system to go with at the time. So that's what I've done. Now, in order to get that steering box in, you've got to shorten this shaft that comes out of the steering column because the new steering box is a little bit longer. It comes out a little bit longer. So. Um, I hit that, uh, I don't remember how I did it, but I drove it up in there, and I've had the steering column in, uh, in and out probably two or three times already, and I know that I can hook it up. So it's at the right distance right now, which probably I ought to measure. Let's see where we are. This is sticking out one and seven eighths inches. So I'm gonna write that down right now before I start doing what I'm planning on doing here. So here we are, one and seven eighths inches. All right, so that's what I need to maintain. Now, the problem I have is ever since I shoved that back in there, well actually, 
This steering column has never worked right because I haven't driven the car with this steering column in it. The problem is this thing, gosh, it feels sort of decent. It's got enough drag in it that when we put the steering column in the first time and we went to put it into reverse for the first time, that cable just decided to go oh, like that. And, and once that's it's a pretty thick cable not as thick as my finger but it's not like a, uh, a bicycle cable or even a brake cable on a motorcycle it's a pretty heavy cable I probably got one around here the old one anyway um, so it got kinked so I bought a new one and I put it in and I did the same thing with the new one so now I've got two screwed up cables so I pulled this out and I want to have a look at this Gosh, it's just so deceptive. It feels... I've already shot a bunch of WD-40 down in this thing and just exercised it a bunch back and forth trying to get it to loosen up. And I don't know if it's something down here that's causing the resistance or if there's a bearing clear back here that's not quite right or something. I, I don't know. But here's my theory. Maybe... When this gets shoved in, that causes something to bind up. So if I pulled it all the way back out to where it was, maybe it wouldn't be bound up. Well, that won't work, but what if I shove it in, say another eighth inch, three sixteenths, or something like that, and then pull it back out to this one and seven eighths. Maybe that would cause whatever's binding up to stay back here and then the shaft can come out again and then it would be looser. I probably need to have a way to measure how hard that pulls. I'm not quite sure how I would do that, but anyway, that's what, that's my latest theory. That's what I'm planning on doing here today. Cram that thing in further and pull it back out. I have taken some care with the steering wheel back here. It's leather wrapped so that I don't end up garfing it up while I'm pounding on it. And I don't know how I managed it, but I managed to scrape some of the paint off of this. You can see that, some rust and some rust there. Although I think that's actually primer there. But anyway, I'm gonna touch that up before I put it back in there. This is probably up under the dash, but I don't know for sure, but it's pretty easy to just hit that with a little bit of black paint so it doesn't show up like that. This steering column I got used at a swap meet one day and get ready to freak out. I paid 75 bucks for this steering column, tilting steering column. My Corvette came with just the standard straight steering column. And uh, as I have gotten older, this steering wheel has become difficult for me to get my leg under. So a firm believer in technology, all I need was a tilting steering column and I'll be able to pull that lever. The steering wheel will jump up out of my way and I should be able to slide in and out of there without dislocating my hip. So, so just because I paid 75 bucks for it doesn't mean that's the way it was when I got it. There were several broken parts on it and I repaired some of them myself. And then there was a guy on eBay that rebuilds the steering columns and so I send it off to California and uh, I don't know, $650 later, it came back in, in near perfect condition. In fact, he even added some of these stickers that I don't care about, you know, factory stickers if you were going for Bloomington Gold or something. But uh, of course, what is this? Look at that, I've chipped paint off there already. That's probably from the number of times I've had it in and out, so. Yeah, I've got a little more touch-up to do on it again. But anyway, of course, I'm not going to win any Bloomington gold with my Borgson steering column. So as it sits right here, I probably have $750 in it, which is still a pretty good deal. If you go looking for one on eBay, they're around $1,500 last time I looked, probably higher now. So let's, uh, let's start in with this, ugh, driving this rod in. Wow. Boy, that was easy.
All right, let's work on getting it back out. There we go. I just wanted to clean up that spline a little bit before I go to put it in. Um, this isn't the bracket that I'm going to be using. This is the original. Um, this will be for sale. Um, although I think I, I think I drilled it out so that these would fit. So I suppose it's probably worthless now. But anyway, um, the Borgson steering column came with one that's uh, more specific to the the steering box so I'll be using that one but anyway as far as this goes I don't know that I did any good or not it, you know it doesn't feel like it turns all that hard but somehow that cable just couldn't handle it so I, I guess I've done all I can do here um, if that doesn't work, then I'm just going to leave the damn cable off and maybe I address it at a different time. However, I was thinking that maybe I could cut part of that cable out and weld in a rod right where it wants to kink so that it would be a little stiffer. That's a little bit of a customization, but it's something I could do. So I, uh, I guess that could happen at a later date, so we'll keep that in mind. Okay, I've sanded the rust out of this area here and this little spot here. And I just have a little bit of paint left. I think I'll probably be able to do this. Oh, I want something under here. Just a little bit of paint in here. Come on. There it is. And that's all we're going to get. And that's all we need. Okay. Well, of course, this is going to have to sit for a while, so uh, it's not going to get any cooler out here. So I'm probably done for the day. So there is progress being made. I have the dash back in and I've looked into the steering column. So that'll be the next thing. Can I zoom in on that? There we go. Look at that. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you like these more shorter format videos where I just show a little bit of progress and not so much what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. In fact, they've already done a video on how to install the dash on there. So you can go look for that in my playlist. But I just wanted to say, please like and subscribe. All YouTubers say that. What the heck? Thanks. Good, good, good.